Yeah. What up, y'all, man? It's Dead Raven, man. You watching Team Rich TV. Mad ambitions for Skrilla. Rags to riches, my nigga. Bags and bitches and... Who is Dead Raven? Um, I'm an artist, of course, and producer and an engineer, man. I work with a lot of people out here, man, in Beaumont. Um, but yeah, basically, I'm just a creative all around, bro. I like do videos and... I just do everything, bro, to be honest with you. Just to sum it up, I do pretty much everything. Rip a nigga like I'm chipped to rip a pimp a nigga mistress. I'm a getter, hitter, I'm a hitter up so I can flip a like I flip a nickel, nigga. I'm the realest nigga. Pop a fucking pill, I'm so fucking real. I'ma keep it real, got a piece of steel. Aim it at you, then I pop my people here. I'm the people's champ, but I don't keep a nigga. Turned up on these pussies, had to turn up on these niggas. How he did it, what he doing, bitch, I'm getting it. Bitch, I'm getting you know, it. flexing in my bitches, hundreds, fifties, tens, and twenties, dirty money, got him checking for a nigga. Hell yeah. Look, I heard the talk of the town was me and my Would I call myself an artist? First or a producer. I would say a producer because um, I think I'm more into like the production and sonics of the song as opposed to what people, because I work with a lot of artists all the time, every day basically. So I'm like, you know, let me make sure it sound right. A lot of people don't be talking about nothing, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. It don't be a lot of things that just really catch my ear or just really, you know what I'm saying, make my day, inspire my day. Like, oh, I gotta go back and listen to it. But basically, I'm into the production of the song. The production of the song could make me like a bullshit song. I ain't gonna lie to you. If it sound really, really good and I like the way it's mixed or I like the way it sounds sonically, I might just give it a little ride. I ain't gonna lie to you. They might not be saying nothing in the song or it might be an instrumental, you know? So I really like production. Big shit talking, cowboys out here shopping in Austin. Plug on my line, said it's price real awesome. Plug on my line, said it's price real awesome. Awesome. Big shit talking, cowboys out here shopping in Austin. Plug on my line, said it's price real awesome. Plug on my line, said it's price real awesome. Awesome. Big shit cracking. Riding through the streets and I'm looking for some action. Where the hell you been? You been absent. I don't follow laws, but the laws of attraction. I am like a magnet. I am like a magnet. And these niggas fall like a goddamn attachment. I'm above average. And before I turned 21, I became a savage. Damn. Black Nation. It started with like, I'ma say T T Baby, Tobias T. Um, me and him, we kind of started rapping together in elementary school. And I knew Duke Diamonds. We all grew up, we went to uh, elementary school. So it really started in elementary school, but like in high school, we really became, I don't know, not the notoriety just started to kick in. We was all really real cool people at the same school and we all brought different crowds together. You know what I'm saying? Duke was really, he was like younger than me. He was younger than us, me and Tobias. He brought a lot of the young people into like the equation of the black nation thing. And me and Tobias, we already, We've been rocking like this, so it just all kind of came together, bro. And then that ended up transitioning into Cake Supply, and you know what I'm saying, you know, we did some good things with Cake Supply too, and we ended up adding more artists. Man, I worked with so many artists, bro. Hey, look, we in the cipher. If you a lighter, I'm a firefighter. I put you out, you liars. I ain't got your pacifiers. I got a pair of pliers. Loosen up, you bruising up. When I bruise you up in all black, ski mask attire. You had to retire, you and your past desires. Nigga, I'm stepping on your past, all my cash required. I get it and flip it, distribute for profit. Get with it, you bitchin', nigga. I'm ripping your noggin. I dig in your fashion, take all the shit in your pocket. My crips get it cracking, my bees get it popping. I'm keeping it knocking, I'm strapped like a Nazi. Straight head. Man, it's really just like I see star power, bro. I know how to identify when I'm like, yeah, I really like something about you. And I know that, like, I know my sound. And I know, like, if I feel like I can bring something out of people. And I think I just got, like, a real good spirit. I'm, like, really into music. You know, I'm very passionate about it. And other people that's passionate about it, it's like we able to come together and just create, you know what I'm saying, something bigger than us. Like, I don't know. It's just like... I don't know, man. Uh, I think sometimes, like at the right time, we just can we can just pull something out, you know. Jesus, you little stupid bitch. Yeah. 
Look, I probably should not have been fucked your baby mama, but I did, and I don't regret it. I'm sick of just being so apologetic. I tell that little bitch, come the fuck out the dress, then I fucked and tell her, get the fuck out and exit. That bitch is a hoe, you the one got her pregnant. I bought the game, had to jump back up in it. This back to the drum boy, rough up and edit. I'm not trying to wait, need to get this shit faster. Hoes talk shit, but bitch, it don't matter. Broke ass bitch, suck dick and give plasma. Bitch, I'm the raven, that wicked little bastard. I think we was like line pushers, bro. I think at the time, it wasn't too many people like shooting their own visuals at the time. I think that was around the time when like visuals started really, people really started getting into that. So I think we was really a little early on, kind of like just, you know, just having fun. Like we broke into our old elementary school and sprayed it into the, on the wall, but yeah. And you know, it was just us really just chilling and you know, we making music like, man, you know what? We got this tab right here. Let's just shoot a video on there. And like, you know what I'm saying? Just put it out. And you know, I just think at the time we were young and people just wanted to see us. You know what I'm saying? Just fucking around and having fun, man. And it, it matched the music. It kind of like matched the sound of the music, what we was going for at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Look, get you some money, the stories you telling not adding up to me. That shit is a cap. Most of these niggas, they can't hold the water. And one day that water gon' see through the cracks. I don't know Adam from Eve. These niggas, some pussy ass niggas, some bitches with straps. I'ma expose you niggas if I get the chance to, homie, and fold you niggas. The clothing line. Yo, man, we was. So TT Baby really took the clothing line thing to the next level. It started with us just like making a shirt. We, we had like the Cake Supply logo. We slapped it on the shirt. We were slapping it on everything we had, just branding, you know. And then, I don't know, bro, I think the way TT Baby marketed the shirts with his music, it really just started to pick up. People were just seeing that, that image, that Cake Supply. It just really stood out to people. It started getting into schools, you know, the younger people was asking me how they can get shirts and stuff like that. But I think it was the music that just really, the music at the time was really putting eyes on the cake supply clothing line. It was just, it's that, that, that logo was striking, I guess. The name, I guess it just hit when you hear it too. Yeah, it just caught though. It just really just caught. I'm just blitzed for you know, our ideas to be able to catch attention and just, I'm blessed to still be doing this, really. Some head, head in the coop, hot look that bitch institute. You see my hope, you gotta pursue. Hot pursuit of a prostitute. I might just pull up and shop with you. I know killers and niggas who rob us too. And got documents way more followed than you. Me and my crew, we gotta get loot. Oh wait. So yeah, they uh 2023 vision and Denzel Seal personally helped us out a lot because of the good relationship we had. Like I say, it was like always a good vibe with them. Um and like the visuals brought, we I feel like they trusted us. We trusted each other to bring out the best of each other. And it was like really no friction in between. Sometimes like you just don't vibe with certain people, bro. And I just think like the relationship we had with them, like they'll do videos for us for the cheap. Sometimes they do it for on a house. They just really was like interested in what we had going on. So a lot of that stuff was really on them. Like, hey, I want to uh, interview y'all. We want to come over there and shoot a video just on the house and it was just like a lot of productivity going on and it, just, it was consistent the consistency it kept us in everybody's faces yeah so i think the music videos took us to the next level even with the black nation thing i think that's what really started getting people to see us the white house yeah all right so the white house i met shout out jet jackson he was the uh, owner of the white house he's also part owner of cake supply with me and tt so, um, yeah, I met Jet Jackson. He used to come to my other studio on Lucas. I had the studio on East Lucas, and they end up selling that property. So we moved it to the White House, and you know, it's just like the relationship built at the, at the White House. It was where I was all the time. So we had a lot of people from, um, you know, like Wild G and uh, people from Port Arthur just coming through. And we was just all in that one space. And it was just like a lot of productivity going on at all times. Like at this time of day, it probably would have been 10 people at the White House right now. We all in the same spot, working on the same song. We helping Tizo in the studio. While, um, you know, Chase Rax might be back, back there making a beat. And we got Gita in there filming. You know, it just was a lot of productivity going on at the White House. We had, um, we had Goyeo come through to the White House. That, you know, that made people like, okay, they really doing it like that over there. Scotty came too. 
I think people seen Scotty come out here, come to the White House. Yeah, it just was like a very, um, it was a very cool place for everybody to come together and work. You know, shout out to Jet Jackson. He was real cool for letting us be at his spot like that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Fuck is you saying? We the young nigga they talk about. Ain't but money. What the fuck is you talking about? So much money. Ain't no way that we running now. I'm the young nigga with Duke Bibba, Duke Mini AK when I walk around. Fuck nigga play, we gon' stay, we gon' walk around. Numbers on the way, no way you can talk it out. I take this shit state to stay. We put this shit in their face so they know it's me. I got good dope coming scope with me. Who the fuck really won't smoke with me? Yeah, I'm self-taught, bro. Uh, I started like producing and mixing my own music when I was like 12 years old, bro. So it started off with me like just uh, making beats on Fruity Loops, and you know, I ended up getting like a, a microphone and an interface basically and set up a studio in my mo my mother's house. And ever since then, bro, I was just all into everything that had to do. I was always hands-on with every single thing. It was, it was more fun to me to like record it and try to get the finished product. At the time, it just was really, really hard to get studio sessions. At the time, I didn't know anybody with a studio other than my own uncle. But at the time, I think, you know what I'm saying, it was just, I was just young. I didn't understand his way of making music. So I just really just took it in my own hands. And, you know, just started from there. And it just grew over time. I've been mixing for like 15 years now. So, you know, as the more I worked on other people's music, I think that's what brought out, like, you know what I'm saying, my skills, it sharpened my skills the more I had to work on other people's music and, you know, try new voices and learn how, like, microphones work and, you know, frequencies and all that stuff like that. It just, I just flew, I, I got into the flow with it over time. I think actually in, like, the past five years, I really started taking production very, very seriously. I think engineers play one of the most important roles in having a quality product. Um, I think like the mix in itself is an art. And like if you don't have somebody that's like really into mixing, they might just put it together. They might not have trained ears to know what to do with the levels of the music. So I think, you know, the engineers and the producers do deserve more recognition. But I think sometimes it's up to the artists, man. I think that's like, sometimes the artists just, you gotta network and you gotta kind of learn music for yourself and learn when somebody don't know how to mix or learn how to like, you know, network and find people that can get you. I, you know, that's, that's, that's a crazy thing because mixing is like, that's very subjective too. So I think you should find you an engineer, somebody that you like, uh, and just grow with them. I think y'all should just grow together because engineering can get very subjective and you'll be spending all your money finding the perfect engineer, bro. I think um, kind of focus on just getting the music out there really too, though. Know? Like I think marketing should be a little bit more important in the beginner stage of a music artist career than mixing because you you can waste years finding a real good engineer. To be honest with you. Head down, nigga shoot and call up 2023. Make a movie, then I call up to TV. Like interview, we wanna be like TVT. Hey, how you do it? Well, I'm from the house, then I have an option. I find out my blessing, then I got it pop. They put me for show, cause I get it rockin'. Why I need a plug when I ain't inside? To you, that's your girl, to you, that's your love, to you, that's your baby, to me, she a hot. To you, that's your dog, to you, that's your brother, to you, that's your homie, to me, he a cop. Lean, lean, I got lean on me. Yeah, we rub lean on our switch and sweets. Hiding the bitch that look slow you down. Still got the Zans for the five a piece. Smoke on my sack, I brought Biggie root. But shit, I finesse on a 10 of G. Spend more on weed than I spend on me. But shit ain't broke, ain't no injuries. Yeah, yeah, Thuka, still got that shooter. TT a shooter. I got a Glock. No, we don't do Rugas. We got me nervous. The lean got me air, bro. Don't make me shoot it. But right now I'm coolin'. I think right now you don't have an excuse to go out there and put the music out. So that's a good way I say about it. Do it take away from the creative space? Yes, I think it does. I think um, I think like people getting presets and stuff like that, 
that's not necessarily that's not necessarily like just gonna make your song make or break your song i think like having somebody to um create and shape your sound to make it sound like you is much more important than downloading i don't think any of the presets good anyway i created my own preset personally and i use that preset and build off that but i don't think the presets and stuff like that um I don't think it's I don't think it's actually I don't think they really any good to be honest with you. I think that's a lot of people just it's an easy way to make money. You make a preset and you sell it. You can't make some money off of it. But most of them presets don't be good. And um they do have like songwriting applications now. I say use it. I'm not against it. I personally don't use it, but I say use it to your advantage. If you can't write music, just, you know what I'm saying, get some help, you know, from the application, you know. You might not even have to, you don't have to get a real person to write your song no more. Uh, everywhere streaming, you know, Apple Music, YouTube. I Sometimes I do exclusives on YouTube. So, like, if you go to my YouTube channel, Underwear Incorporated, um, you might find some exclusives on there, but basically, yeah, all my music is on all streaming platforms. What up, y'all, man? It's Dead Raven, man. You watching Team Rich TV. Underworld was cracking.